YouTube fan community, birds fans, random people on the internet, my name is Giggins, and we're here today to talk about the birds, the notorious bird brothers. I had this on cassette, it's the only format I had this thing on, so kind of hold this little tiny cassette up to the screen today. This album is fascinating. What an album. Um, Charts-wise, it didn't do so hot in America anyway, hit number 47. In England, hit number 12, so it did very well overseas, but it was their fifth album, and for as adventurous or chill, or psychedelic, or as bluegrass as this album could be, the confidence on it is unreal for a band that was literally splintering at this part. But what's also really cool about it is it's the last album to feature all the original birds for quite a while. Not by... <laughs> Let me rephrase that. So, when they started recording this album in mid-1967, mid <laughs> things were falling apart. David Crosby was kind of in and out with the guys. He wasn't getting on with them too well. He would introduce songs to the band, and the other guys were not really receptive to them. Um, some things happened at shows, and they just the other guys weren't really feeling what was going on. So they actually ended up firing David Crosby at the end of the year, around October of 1967, while they were making this album. So David Crosby plays on this album with Roger McGuinn and uh, Chris Hillman. And so he's on this album. Okay, so I'm laying that out there. He's on this album. He goes, they bring back Gene Clark, who left the band in early 66. He had a fear of flying. He didn't want to be on tour. This wasn't working for him. They brought him back for like a month. He's on the album. And, you know, so you've got the original core group. Also, the drummer, Michael Clark, he got fired at one point as well. Or maybe he quit on his own. And... During that time, they had some session players come in, but then he came back to finish the album, and then after he finished it, he, he got told he wasn't a bird anymore. So this album is just fraught with tension, ups and downs, guys coming and going. It, it was the first album with all the original members on it since Fifth Dimension in 1966, and you know Clarence White also appears on this album. He would become a member later on in 1968 after Graham Parsons was in the band. So like this is such a flux era album for them, but because of that, I think the energy on it is just unreal because you have a couple of guys that are really trying to prove themselves like the main core members of this band uh, at this point, Roger McGuinn and Chris Hillman basically stirring the ship. It's a fantastic album. It really really is. I mean, when this album came out in January, only two of the original members of the Birds were actually in the band when this thing came out, which is fascinating. Track one on this thing is Artificial Energy, a real groovy opener, loaded with soaring horns, punchy drums, really cool vocals. It's a bright, sunny song with a lot of heart. It's a total groover all the way through. And it's one of those songs where you hear it and you're like, that's the Birds? Cool. All right, I'm into this. Which is funny because the next song on here, Going Back, which was a single for them, really does feel like a bird song, but they make it so chill. The vibe on this song is like unbelievably mellow, but in a really constructive and interesting way. It's not like it's boring. It's just, it's just chill. It's the best word I can use to describe it. Really great chimey guitar picking, classic birds kind of style guitar. Touches of strings here and there. Real reflective. Um, nice little slide guitar notes. They blend beautifully with the rest of the guitar work. Really gentle lead vocals. Um, it's a really nice song. That's the best way I can describe it. It's just a nice song. Natural Harmony is a track three on this thing. And man, this song is groovy too. Jazzy, spiky chords throughout. Dancing drums. It sounds like if the song I See You, their older song, it sounds like if I See You took acid or mushrooms or something. It was just really tripping out. It grows, it's weird, it's catchy, it's interesting. The changes work, though. It's an infectious song. For as, as adventurous as it is, you're in for the ride, and it's a digestible, digestible uh, adventurous time, if you will. It's a weird song that works, is what I'm trying to say. Draft Morning uh, spills out from the end of Natural, uh, Natural Harmony, and this song is just, like, ghostly. It's got this pulsing, pensive, chill rock feel. It's gorgeous production. The drums sound so dense and crisp, and the war sound effects really drive home the message. It's an incredible track. Was It Born to Follow happens after that, and classic bluegrass, steadle, uh, steadle pedal steel guitar. I'm tripping over my tongue tonight. 
Uh, man, wonderful birds harmonies on this one too. It's kind of like going right back to the birds after that really adventurous track before it. But that spacey phaser filled middle bit is just angular and tense, which makes for an awesome transition as it returns back to that chill bluegrass. Like you just mixed psychedelic with country and bluegrass and it worked amazing get to you some real cool chord changes on this one they leave to like heavy breathing bits um psychedelic country feel again with this one it's mesmerizing changes now love the clean guitar tone on this one the warm vocal harmonies heavy use of steel guitar again which is great and that spacey guitar feel that just kind of drips in and out of the speakers while the bass and the drums splash along so many unexpected moments on this song in this album in particular, but very cool track. Um, old John Robertson, upbeat, chimey rocker, bounces along earnestly, then enters this like great phased out moment, exactly what you were hoping for for a change. Like as, as soon as you feel like a song in this album is gonna be predictable, like oh, I've heard this before, I know where it's gonna go. They take a left turn and completely send you down the rabbit hole and you're just like, whoa, I wasn't expecting that. Tribal Gathering, this song is super cool. Rapid paced vocals, glorious harmonies, chirping drums. This song is just magic all the way through. Rockin' moments, let them jam. I, I mean, this song is just incredible. It's a chill, groove, psychedelic feel. I really dig this one. Dolphin Smile sounds like dolphins. They make the guitars sound like chirping, laughing dolphins. It's insane. The hi hat and rim work are very cool. You get these big expansive moments and let the song grow and develop. It's a very imaginative song, very creative track. And then you get the uh, the last song on here, Space Odyssey, very eerie, bouncy intro. Literally sounds like you're floating through like the bleakness of outer space. The they create that weightlessness feel effortlessly. It's a fascinating feeling that they create with their instruments. And again, it's an, it's an ultimate sort of mind-expanding psychedelic type of track. I mean, this album is like 28 minutes of bliss. It's one of the best albums of the 60s. I really, really dig it. Let me show you the back. This is, um, I'm guessing this is probably from the early 80s. It's got the Dolby system it mentions on here. It's got a barcode as well. So I'm guessing it's a reissue from the early 80s with its original case. There's the tape itself. Real simple. Nothing to write home about. J card. It's an album I've owned for a long time and not until recently did I start actually really listening to it. And I'm so glad I did. It's, it's also, I should add, this is produced by Gary Usher. Yeah, that Gary Usher, Beach Boys Gary Usher, King of Hot Rod songs Gary Usher. He did this. After working with like Sagittarius in 1967, you know, My World Fell Down, that whole song. He was going down a road of like real trippy, but beautiful production. His skills, that guy was so talented. He brings out the magic of these songs and makes them just come to life. You are in this world that they create. This album doesn't feel like a collection of songs. It feels like moments in a time and it captures a, a mood, a feel. And the production is just as integral of an instrument as the actual guitars and drums and vocals. They really nailed something beautiful with this album. And it's one of my favorite Birds albums. I love this one. I love Sweetheart of the Rodeo. And I really like um, Younger Than Yesterday. So, I mean, like, that, this kind of era of them for me is, like, one of my favorites. 67 to 68. They were just on fire. So, to the Birds and everybody involved in making this album, thank you for making an absolute masterpiece. If you've never heard this before, pick up a copy, stream it online, buy the CD. However you play your music, you will not be disappointed. It is an album that you put on and you get lost in and you're all the better for it. Hell of an album. Uh, nine out of 10. All day long, nine out of 10. Easy score. So that's it. My name is Giggins. This has been The Birds with the Notorious Bird Brothers. The Notorious Bird Brothers is what I'm trying to say. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, it means the world to me. Thank you so much, guys. Take care of yourselves. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.